Three. Hints for homework one, part four. Two questions. Number seventeen. Number nineteen. Number seventeen. This question. When a computation is run in vector mode on the vector hardware, it is eight times faster than the normal mode of execution. We call the percentage of time that could be spent using vector mode the new name percentage of vectorization. The question: What percentage of vectorization is needed to achieve a speed up of two? So, this question. We have a similar question in our comprehension question set number two, module two, part C, question five. So this one, only slightly different, just some numbers are different. Yeah. So here, actually, this question is not very hard. Yeah, pretty straightforward, relatively simple. Yeah, but why I explain here? The only reason is the background. And this one use some slightly different background. Comparing with、uh, what we learn, we use the general situation. But here it's a special situation.、Now、vector mode, for example. So that's about parallel computing. Okay. So the vector mode. So actually, we are talking about parallel computing. This topic, yeah. For this class, I do not plan to cover this topic because it is a big topic. So we do not have that much time. Yeah. So we mainly we focus on instruction level parallelism, not processor level parallelism. So the parallel computing, that's the processor level. Parallelism. Okay.、Yeah. All right. But here we don't need that much background in processor level parallelism. We don't need that. We only need just based on our existing experience. So we know a lot of computing tasks can be split it into several parallel tasks. So then, if we have multiple processors, then we can distribute computation tasks in those parallel processors. Then we can get faster performance. That background is enough. Then, when we come back to our general situation, yeah, that's we can use our General description in the you know speed up context. Here we have the same speed up context. Yeah, we just use that. Okay. So here the ten times this is the local speed up. Okay. Yeah. This two point four the global speed up. All right. Yeah. Then percentage of vectorization, that is our F E N, right? If you connect, you know these concepts to our usual notations, then you just apply our standard formula. Okay, yeah, here. Based on the solution in our comprehension questions, we have the, this equation. This is our standard formula. So the global speed up, local speed up, f, right? Then we solve the equation, one variable equation, so we can easily find the answer. So you just do the Same way you can solve question number seventeen easily. Yeah. All right.
So that's this question here. The next question, number 19, this one, we also, we have a similar question in our comprehension set. Number one, module one, part D, question three. Yeah. All right. The only difference, yeah, almost only difference is the number here different. Other than that, almost the same. The solution is given there, but here let me just explain a little bit. Yeah. First, we need to use the dynamic power formula. When we use, we can use some abstract constant C here. Yeah. So we don't need exact number for the C, just some abstract constant C. Yeah. So then we can represent as C times V squared times frequency F. Okay. All right. So then, so when we write the original uh, before any change, because we want to do comparison, okay? The original dynamic power, let us use P0 equals C V squared F original. Okay. So then, look at the you know destination. The destination we do voltage change twice. The first time reduce by b percent. The second time increase by b percent. But we need to combine these two changes to get the current voltage. Yeah. All right, so. If I write the formula, we can write this way. Okay. P2, yeah, assume, you know, we do changes twice. P2. Yeah. P2 equals C times V2 squared and F2. All right. V2, based on the given condition, 1 minus B, B percent. Yeah, for convenience, we can drop that percent okay and increase v percent from original v remember we need to square it so square 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 all right then the frequency part we have assumption okay in yeah a percent change in the voltage will result in a percent change increasing or decreasing respectively in frequency yeah so that's the given assumption yeah so this one uh, if you want to ask why why we have this condition don't ask why first in the real world situation we don't have this condition we never have condition like this in the real world the real world situation is much, much more complicated. The change could be very complex. But in that case, it is very hard to do the calculation. So I simplify the real world situation. So I make this assumption, the main goal to make our computation as simple as possible. So we just take it. We take this assumption and do our practice in this question. Then the corresponding frequency, similar pattern in the change, one minus B first, one plus B second, and original F. After that, then we can, you know, combine these numbers, one minus B cubed, times one plus B cube, V cube, uh, V square F, okay? So you can see basically C times V square F, that's P zero, okay? So we can write one minus B cube, uh, one minus B, one plus B, we can combine, right? Yeah, because 
the difference of squares. We can use that formula. 1 minus b squared cube p0. How about that? Okay. Yeah. How about that? So then this number based on the given condition equals 0 0.9 p0. Then we can easily, we can solve for b number. So that is our comprehension question example. For our homework question, you only need to modify that 1.2b change part. Okay? Modify that change part. Yeah. But your equation should be slightly different. And when you solve the equation, you modify your equation, you can also find the solution. Okay? It is not very hard. Yeah. So you can do it. Yeah. All right. So that is our part D.3. Yeah. Yeah. Let me finish right here.